I just want to show you this sheep's back end and how well trimmed out it is. So here is the stand that most people will use for dressing sheep. Beautifully marked. Great for the camera. Good morning sheep fans. Cami's the name, sheep's the game. Today we've got a couple of scanning jobs on, but first of all, I thought I'd take the chance to pop over to Dardos, where they have the Dutch Spotted and Swarbles. I'll link the Facebook page below, with Matthew Simpson here, who is quite good at the old dressing. And loads of you were asking about sheep dressing and seeing sheep being dressed. Now, I was too slow to go over and actually see any of the dressing, but I saw he posted some pictures on Facebook and I thought I'd pop over and get a wee look close up and compare a couple of sheep so you can see the difference when they've been dressed. The sign behind me here, these are going to the sale at Carlisle on the 10th of December, which should be tomorrow if I get this video done in time. After this, we've got some jobs to do, scanning some rylands. There's a couple of pygmy goats coming with our favourite farmer, James Nisbet. Not that you're not my favourite, eh, Matthew. <laughs> It's their favourite. <laughs> All the sheep fans' favourite farmer, James Nisbet. We're going to see him today as well. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Join us as we go through this scanning season and try to have a bit of fun on the way. With regards to merchandise, I get hundreds of messages just now about the merchandise. Maybe not hundreds, but quite a few. There is stuff coming this week, hopefully. We'll be up on the site around Friday. Don't quote me on that. It's been a nightmare getting a supplier to deal with the volume of stuff that you guys are asking for. So thanks very much for all the support so far. Let's get a look at these sheep. So here is the stand that most people will use for dressing sheep. You see it just works off a hand winch there at the front that Matthew's winching up fairly easily and it brings the sheep up to a nice height to work at so that you're not bent over all the time when you're trimming away because this is a slow process. It takes a lot of time, meticulous work, brushing, trimming, brushing. We will get a video on it soon but you can see what it does for the sheep here, if I come down to this level. Just really shows off our features, it's a nice strong level back, nice broad back, and it accentuates the back end there as well, it really shows off our key features. And with the Dutch Spotted, the key features are things like their muscle density. And if I just do this here, when you're, one of the things when you're with the show with sheep, you always see the guys kind of play about with their legs here, try to get them into position. Because that's where you want the sheep to stand nice and square, but that's another story for another day. I just want to show you this sheep's back end and how well trimmed out it is. And nice it's looking. That's the way this system works. Dead easy, a wee rope over the head. Sheep's head goes in, a rope over. So I just wanted to give you a wee look. I'll show you the, the sheep he's actually selling will be the, these Dutch spotted here. And he also has a great wee gem here for anyone looking to get into the, the Dutch spotted breed. Here's an interesting one that some of you guys and girls might not know. And I just found this out today when I've been speaking to Matthew. Again, this is what I love about speaking to farmers about their stock. You learn so much. With the Dutch spotted, you can actually register a crossbred lamb. So Matthew has a lamb here that's out of a Charlie U to a Dutch spotted ram and that can actually be registered as a grade 4 Dutch spotted. It's a sort of cheaper way to get into the breed but the issue be you'll then need to breed that out for 5 years until you come back to a grade 1 pure. Ah, they might think you need to breed the same sheep for 5 years. Aye, it take longer because you lambs and then could take 10 years. If you buy that as a grade 4, you then need to breed it pure for 5 generations before it becomes a grade 1 pure Dutch spotted. So you're in it for the long haul if you're going that route into it. But it's a tremendous lamb. This is it here. It's these two pure Dutch spotted lambs going into the sale as well. And as you can see here from the videos I'm showing you, they have all been dressed and tidied up, ready for the sale as well. And they're looking tremendous. He also has this one crop ewe that's in lamb with a single she's in lamb, obviously to Dutch spotted, producing a pure Dutch spotted lamb. All registered, all pedigree, as are all the Dutch spotteds here. Matthew still dips his toe a wee bit with the Charlies. He's got a Charlie ewe here, also going to the sale. She's in lamb to a pure Charlie ram, so a pure Charlie lamb off of her, of course. Cammy, that's obvious. She's another big strong sheep here that Matthew's got for the sale. That's going on tomorrow. 
something different. I just thought I'd show you the sheep once they're titivated up there and this is a wee stand we use. We will get a video doing the actual job at some point soon, but it was too late here. I just saw the pictures once on Facebook and Matthew let me come along for a look. Good luck to him at the sale. Let's go and scan some sheep. So that's the third job done of the day. We're on swarvels this time. Another breed that's quite common for early lambing. These will be due, when will these be due then? Uh, it's only 70 days on us. These will be due around the 24th of January. So it's still very early for sheep to be lambing, but it's common in these kind of breeds, as I discussed earlier. And we had a set of quads in here, a couple of triplets, We'd be scanning well over 200% anyway. I think everyone was in lamb actually. Yeah. Every, every sheep in lamb as well, which is good. Our quads here. Beautifully marked by number four. We'll see how long that lasts. On to the next job. So this is a total, I was going to say a life hack. It's not really a life hack, it's just great advice. Probably the best bit of advice I've ever put on this channel is see a local baker's. Now this might only work in Scotland because I don't even know if you get soda scones in other parts of the world. I honestly don't know. I haven't lived enough to find that out. But if you do, soda scone, ham, cheese, and onion. Toasted. Wow. Like, do it. You won't be sorry. You, you'll be messaging me actually saying, Cammy, you've changed my life and my lunch. Well, we've got a fan favourite we've not seen for a while. There he is. <laughs> Wait, the, the sheep fans ask about you all the time. I'm need to start a Good Morning James fans. Good morning, Nisbet fans. He's brought us a wee treat as well to scan. It's good by a bit of banter. Look at these ones here. Rylands. This is uh, an English breed. Traditionally, obviously we're here in Scotland with them. They're all due to lamb after the 1st of January, which is part of the breed standards as well that I was talking about earlier with the Swarbles and the Suffolks. They all have different breed standards for when they can actually lamb. This is a flock of pedigree Rylands. We have around 40 or so here to do. Quite broad sheep. So a lot of you, of course, Southern Hemisphere and things like that, you'll be used to woolly sheep with the top knots and wool around the faces. But it's not so common here, especially in Scotland. I think England has a lot of different breeds and things like that, but in Scotland it's not so common. But they're great for the camera. You'd, you would almost say they're cute. They look good. So we'll get them in the, the crate here and get a look at them. Oh no, are Rylands allowed to have triplets? This is actually another clever thing that's worth covering, is the sheep. You'll see on the side on there different numbers. Now that's for uh, management purposes, rather than having the hassle, especially with these with so much wool on their heads, rather than having the hassle of having to try and read the tags all the time, Davy the farmer here can look at the numbers on the side really easy, relate that to his books, and write down, say, how many lambs it's, is in it, when it's tucked. Great for management. These numbers will be redone at some point as well. And it means you can keep proper records of things in a lamb. And it makes it job a lot easier on trying to read the tags on these sheep. Now, when you see it says number 24 on the side, that doesn't mean it says number 24 on the tag. He'll just have number 24 and it's tag number written. And it's all easy to work with. So next up, we're doing something for James. He's wanting me to make the point early doors that the reason they're so dirty is because they're outside and it's Ayrshire. And it's very mucky this time of year. Whereas these lovely Rylands that we had for here, Davy was organised, he had them in early, they were nice and clean. No such luck when you're working with James. But he's a nice boy and you can forgive him a lot. You know, when they're good natured like that, you can forgive them a lot. Perfect. 
Suffolk's. They're not as cute as those Rylands, eh? They're just ugly. But they produce a fantastic prime lamb. I believe they have an extra rib. Or maybe that's just a made up slogan. I don't honestly know the truth of that. Certainly very long sheep. Produce a fantastic lamb. Sells really well. If you're early lambing, Suffolk's are a way ahead. Although I am quite a big fan of this New Zealand Suffolk that you get. James can't hear me saying this. He'll be raging when he watches this back that I've mentioned that. But each their own. I'm not dissing Suffolk's. They have a job. They produce a fantastic prime lamb, especially if you're doing the early lambing job. They're just hard to work with. They're so big and heavy and... I'm just glad I'm not pushing them up. Yeah, oh, are these to scan yet too? Five dosses, aye. Look at this. That's not a pure dosset there, is it? Are they all pure dossets? Uh, so this is, these are big rylands that I've got here to do. <laughs> Pure pedigree dorsets, pygmy goats as well. It's not a bad day, a bit of variety, we love that in the sheep game. So here's some dorsets, very popular down the south of England and apparently around Cumnock as well. Davey, you quite into dorsets? Um, Oops, do you lamb them? They're butter recipients for islands. Is that what they are, recipients? They're bought for recipients. Ah, oh, right. Islands. And now you've got them as pures? Aye. Some man. Gotten for punishment. <laughs> They're great sheep, great sheep. Do you the tips from the 5th of August? 5th of August? Yep. How many days is that? That'll be like, they've up to nearly up to 90 days then. Aye, yeah, right, nightmare. Cheers, my arm's just a bit hanging off of it. First, first day out, the arm's pretty sore. I have a bad right shoulder anyway. Interesting fact, all of you won't know. But I have a bad right shoulder. It's always quite sore. Hey, 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 but I just grit my teeth, I don't even Are mention you ready? it. Apart from, I'm ready. <laughs> Two. Right one, <laughs> one thing with James here, like, you'll see it at shearing time as well. Every sheep that comes in, he's got a wee story about it. Credit where it's due, he does Kenny stock quite well. He's got a lot of flaws, as we all have. Especially, you know, as men, we have a lot of flaws, but stockmanship is definitely not one of his. That's a single. Second set of quads today. Two. What's that? 240%? Oh, good. Everything in lamb. Everything in lamb. 240%, not bad. Three triplets, one quad. Be easier holding this thing, would it not? I'm not going to get it in that. Point shoot. Hey, give me. Give me a good side, Jamesy. Right. Can you tell me the David's holding it? I don't know. I didn't think I should look down at that in that thing, kid. Look at the gut on it. I think they're just like that. Alright, it's not easy to get a connection these things. A wee bit hairy. Alright, hairy. I know, it's just a cornet bit. And uh, the woman, the woman for Cumnock at Harry. Ah, can I see you on it? I don't want to tell you. Do you know how she's doing shank, kid? I don't think you can. Why is she such a big gut? I think that's just how they look. Right, just keep no. her in her, don't let her out. Right, right. She's quite fat. Bring on wee Prixie. What's her What is wee Prixie? Try so, wee Prixie and see if you see her in there. Because this is, this is no good. This is, this is, means that Christopher's not working. Aye, right, she's in kid. Well on, too far on to really be saying. Aye. But she's 100%, aye. But you want her she is then? Oh, I've not seen it. She, she did jump the fence and she was on the other side really well, but I thought oh, she's probably she's probably had it. No profit this year, mate. Right, we can let them go. I'll take a video later when it actually has a kid. Oh. Right, come on, guys. Right, let's see so just these handful of dossets to do now, I'm going to finish up with these here. been talking quite a bit, I have a lot of footage from today to edit and put together. Hopefully it makes a good video. This is more or less what I'll be doing every day through the winter, bar when I'm doing jobs with my own sheep. It's not that exciting, I'm going to have to work hard to try and make it a bit more interesting, a bit more exciting. Click the subscribe button, keep watching, I'll try and keep making the videos. Cheers guys. How many sheep of yours am I getting to scan this year James? 15. <laughs> and two goats. <laughs> two goats, can't it wait? <laughs>